So a bit of a different place to start off today's episode. I've come here to the uh, to Madrid to the head of the Spanish footballing authorities building and their, their facilities that they've got here. And uh, I've come to basically ask them why they hate Lincoln Red Imps. Obviously, they've really tried to hamper us getting... They let us into their divisions and their football league system, but they've really tried to stop us getting promoted. And I've come to ask them why. So I'm going to go and ask them and have a meeting with them right now. Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode where hopefully we'll get some answers from the footballing authorities in Madrid. I've gone for a meeting with them. Let's see what they say. Today though, we've got a pretty interesting episode coming up. Two games, the first one against Malia, which are a team we've got a game in hand against because of an international break that happened in between episodes. And then we're also taking on Racing Santander, who used to be a La Liga side back in the day. Since you were last here though, I must say things have been mental. Absolute just bipolar, basically. I can't explain what's gone on. So you were last here for the 3-1 win against Deportivo and then the 5-1 the, the loss, which was terrible to a team that I'm still struggling to pronounce. Atletico Belieres is I think maybe how you say it. Following those two games, we have played seven games and the first three we lost in just I can't, I can't explain the games we played, basically. It was absolutely terrible. Numanthia, we lost 4-1. Espanyol B, we lost 5-2. And then this team, which I'm going to try and pronounce, Recreativo is maybe not your set, but I've said it like that anyway. Uh, we lost 3-0 to them. So in the space of four games, uh, we scored four goals and conceded 18. You'll notice that we have used a whole range of different formations. Against Belieres, we used a 4-3-3, which didn't go very well. We moved to a 5 at the back against Numanthia, which we then conceded 4 with. We then went to a diamond against Espanyol, conceded 5 with that. And then back to the 5 at the back against Recativo, whatever they're called. Uh, and we, we lost 3-0. I then thought, okay, enough of that. Let's switch back to the 4-3-3. And since we've done that, uh, we, we haven't lost. We then beat Real Union 5-1, Villarreal B 1-0. Villa Venice 4-2 and then a 1-1 draw with bottom of the table Baracaldo. So really, really bizarre. Uh, I don't understand how I've gone from conceding 18 to then only conceding 4. It's, it's mad. So really, uh, I think the 4-3-3 is the way to go. Potentially these formations that we've also got loaded up are just terrible and we should never use them ever again and try and develop something else. But for now, we stick with the 4-3-3 because we do actually get results with that. What it means for the league table is that we sit 10th right now, slap bang in the middle, which is exactly where we need to be this season to get the board to be happy with us. 18 points on the board, but of course we do have a game in hand, win that, and we could go up ahead of the Racing Santander into to seventh place uh, unless of course we win by a huge amount and then we might go ahead of Real Vallecano on goal difference but if I'm honest with you I'm not counting on a big goal difference swing so we're going to head into today's game uh, Anthony Ward will start in goal of course so the back line of Javi Vazquez, Eusebio Monzo, Lopez and Javier Chitigel, Tomic and Cipollina start in that midfield through because Pablo Gonzalez is currently out with an injury for two to five weeks, which he suffered in training uh, literally a week ago. So he's out for a little while, which is a bit annoying, but it does give some of our youngsters a chance to impress. Of course, leading the line for us at the moment is Kike, Crosdale and Raul Jr. None of them have lost their goal-scoring touch as they've got eight, six and five between them all, or individually, I should say. So heading into this game, I have no idea what to expect, just because we, <laughs> we have played really weirdly and I don't understand how we're so poor one week and then brilliant the next week it's it's really bizarre I can guarantee you this game now will be like a boring nil nil game with no highlights but clearly the five at the back doesn't work the diamond doesn't work anymore because there's no width in the squad and it worked last season but I guess the teams in this division are just better at punishing the lack of width that we have sometimes better uh, obviously five at the back just invites too much pressure onto us and we can't really do anything to get ourselves forward and things like that. So the 4-3-3 is the only formation we've got right now which seems to be working and uh, we make a good save there. Great interceptions and blocks there from our players to deny the goal for the opposition team. Of course, we are at home right now. I was asked in the comment section uh, in the past two videos actually uh, about the B team, how they've been getting on in Gibraltar, also playing in our home stadium. We did cover it briefly at the end of last season, but for last season, or for those of you who didn't see it, uh, they came third in the table and didn't get European football. So the whole B team thing is working as intended in that division, although it would have been quite nice for them to actually get into European football. 
And just as I predicted, this game, 70 minutes in, there's been one highlight, that was it. I told you there was nothing going to happen in today's game. Let's get Tomic off for Scott Marshall. Jez Jezovic is going to come on for Crosdale. And then we'll also not do anything else. So let's confirm those substitutes. Come on, boys. 10 minutes to go attacking. Let's say demands more from not just individuals. I want the entire team, please. Uh, entire team demands more as Raul Jr. gets on the ball. Can he put a ball into the middle? He can, but it's to no one as Cipollina puts it back to Raul Jr. who can't win the ball ahead of the keeper. The highlights looks like it's going to continue. Lobato, is he going to hoof it up or is he going to drop it to one of our strikers? He hoofs it and it drops to one of their strikers very nicely who almost chipped Anthony Ward. Great save from him. Is the highlight going to continue? No, it's not. So really a big lack of highlights in today's first game, um, which is completely different to how the games have been in between episodes. It's been highlight central because either we're scoring loads of goals or being we're conceding loads of goals. This time, it's a boring nil-nil. Annoyingly, no one even scored then, so we couldn't even get in the one football integration. But there was a few match events, and of course, you can see all the match events on the one football app. Uh, when you go into a live game, any live fixture you want to, you can see all the goals, all the yellow cards, who gets the assist, all the red cards, all the substitutes, it's a weird order to say it in, but you can see all of that kind of stuff, uh, right up to date information, as live as it gets. It's quicker than other apps that I've used in the past. It's like literally instant. Uh, so I've been really, really impressed with the uh, the app recently, uh, particularly when it comes to Lincoln City Games. And Pushkas Academy, I've been getting the Pushkas Academy notifications as well. So if you've not yet downloaded the One Football app for free from the link in the top line of the description would massively appreciate it if you could do so a bit of a frustrating draw but we are still ninth in the table we'll move up to ninth in the table i should stay ahead of badajoz so into the top half which is fantastic just a little bit annoying because we should have won that game and we could have gone a lot higher up in the table with that being our game in hand but i suppose in some ways that is still pretty decent it's five games in a row without losing now and if you told me that's five games ago then i would not have believed you three days though until the game against racing santander this is going to be a very difficult one they're just ahead of us in the table they're a very decent side and of course they've had a week off to recover from their last game whereas we've only got a couple of days now i was also asked in between episodes about the state of the gibraltar national side obviously a few of our players have come through and have done very very well if we look at their team selection anti-war plays for them lopez plays for them brito ronan cipollina uh, Martel Teller Crosdale, of course. TJ DeBar, of course, we sold to Europa. Uh, he plays for them too. Raul is down there on the bench. Uh, Yaya's there. Uh, so there's quite a few of the boys in the squad. By looks of things, they beat Romania once, which is pretty good going. Uh, they beat Andorra in a friendly, and they got a draw against Latvia. And they also uh, beat Andorra in the European qualifying groups and got a draw with them as well. So they're making some progress. Unfortunately, that progress is to four points and fifth in the group, so they are nowhere near getting anywhere near European or major international tournaments just yet. But give it some time, give it some time, I'm sure they'll get there. So I'll be honest with you, I don't really know what we do, um, because any other formation, we lose games, and then we switch back to 4-3-3 three, three, and we're winning, but now we've gone two draws in a row. So I'm a little confused and conflicted about what to do. So I think I might just leave it as it is. Might get Tomic off and swap him with Scott Marshall. See what he can do. That might be the only change that we make, though. But as kickoff is upon us here for this Racing Santander game, I feel like this is one of the first teams we've played against in the league, which is actually, like, a pretty big deal. Because Racing Santander used to be a really decent side. Like, like they were really, really good. Uh, and obviously, I think, fell into some sort of issues, which is why they've dropped down the leagues so much. And we're playing them right now in the third tier. But... I feel like it's a it's it's a it's a milestone to play a team like Racing Santander in my opinion. Maybe I'm just holding them into high esteem in my head because I've played with them on FIFA once or something like that. I don't quite know. But I feel like this is a real good opportunity to show ourselves in a great light today. Get a win today and we can put ourselves as, you know, candidates for trying to get near the top of the table. Again, just like last season, I do feel like this division is so, so tight in terms of the quality of teams. Like I feel like you could easily come you know, 18th one season and then win it the next season. I think it's just that tight. Racing Santander on the ball, though, looking to come forward to try and inflict a, a goal against us. There have been more highlights in this game in the first 15 minutes than there were in the entire previous game, by look to things. As Raul puts the ball forward to Crosdale. Crosdale, go on, lad. 
oh, puts it while I was about to start screaming. Screaming in celebration, obviously. I meant to say celebrating, but it came out as screaming. Um, that, that sounded a bit ominous. But as the rest of this first half goes by, uh, neither of the two sides have created a really decent goal-scoring opportunity. As I say, that Racing Santander with a corner, which Anthony Ward collects. Can we distribute this quickly, please? It's a good hoof up towards Raul, who's nowhere near it in the end. Not so good. Uh, we do retain possession at the back, though, as Anthony Ward uh, plays it out to Javi Vazquez, who puts it forward towards Crosdale, who knocks it down to no one. It's Racing Santander coming forward again. And I can feel a goal coming here, unfortunately. And we've, oh, we've been very, very lucky there as they hit the crossbar. Okay, half time, nil nil. Not too bad. Racing Santander are a good side. Obviously, you know, a draw against them is a point gained in my opinion. So as long as we can just keep doing what we're doing, I'm okay with it. But obviously, I would like us to go out there and get the winners. Raul Jr. on the ball, coming forward. Go on, lad. Gets past the defenders. Can he put the ball across the six-yard box? He's brought down in the area. It's a penalty. Which Raul Jr. will take himself? Come on, lad. Put this one away. I believe in you as he steps up for the penalty. Scores it. That's my boy. Ninth of the season for Young Round as he sends the keeper the complete wrong way. And we're 1-0 up. Big result for us if we manage to hold on to this 1-0 lead and win the game. As it stands right now, we should be up to 22 points, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, from a table, which could put us quite high up, actually. We'll see the lead table in just a second. As Anthony Ward, go on, lad, clears it to you, Sabio Monzo, who's played very well at centre-back. I think he's probably going to be that permanent centre-back on that left-hand side as Raul gets his 10th of the season. What a fantastic goal that was from the youngster. He is sublime. Raul is just sublime. If The thing with Raul is, though, if anyone's going to be sold next, it will probably end up being Raul because he just knows where the back of a net is all the time. Corner for Racing Santander. He puts one into the middle. It's cleared, but only as far as their own player who puts it wide of the mark. We're still 2 0 up with 20 or so minutes to go. Changes need to be made as we take Chipolina off. He's looking tired for Scipio. Let's also take Javi Vazquez off, who's had a terrible game for Ethan Brito. And then I want to give Jez Jezovic another run, but we'll swap him for Kike this time. But with 15 minutes or so to go, I'm pretty confident that we're going to see this game out as uh, nothing else is particularly happening. I mean, Racing Santander will feel very aggrieved by this. The XG is very similar. They've had nearly double the amount of shots that we've had at our own place as well. So we're not playing particularly well at home. But when it matters, we get the result which is absolutely fantastic as they nearly score they've come very close actually very close Racing Santander they hit the crossbar once they've had near misses like that as well so really they should have done a little bit better with the chances that they had and it could have been a complete different scoreline on a different day but at the end of the day the only stat that matters is the scoreline what a beautiful cliche that is if you win 2-0 that was special lads no one gave us a chance and overall it's actually been a pretty decent episode. I don't think anything can bring me down, actually. Nothing is going to bring me down from this one because, you know, we've had a good October after a terrible September, a good October, a good episode. Next time out, we'll come back and play... I don't know. Let's work it out, shall we? Maybe Mathia and Alcoyano because we would have done better than and, and Belarius, whatever they're bloody called, next time out. Uh, but we've done them before. So maybe Mathia and Alcoyano. But I'm happy. Nothing, nothing's going to bring... The phone's ringing. One sec. Hello? I'm listening. I'm listening. What have they said? Because in the meeting they said to me it was all going to be okay. They've said what to you?